Hey guys, thank you for clicking on that link. Uh, this is module eight, cast iron, pipe, and fittings. The objective here is upon completion of this module, you'll be able to do the following, identify the various types of cast iron pipe, identify the material property, storage, and handling requirements, identify the types of valves used with cast iron pipe, identify the techniques used in hanging and supporting cast iron, properly measure, cut, and join cast iron, Identify the ha hazards and safety precautions associated with cast iron pipe. The performance task includes select the correct materials for cast iron pipe, identify types of fittings and their uses, uh, select the appropriate personal protective equipment for cast iron pipe, correctly measure, cut, and join cast iron pipe, select the correct support and spacing for the application. start out with the introduction. Cast iron pipe, often called soil pipe, is used for drain, waste, and vent DWV systems in residential, commercial, and industrial plumbing. Cast iron is strong and durable piping that resists corrosion and abrasion. It also can withstand extreme temperature changes. Cast iron pipe was first introduced in the United States at the beginning of the 1800s when it was used to replace rotting wooden pipe in the water supply and gas tights, gas light systems in Pennsylvania. Since that time, cast iron pipe has been used extensively in the plumbing industry. All right, our first note talks about cast iron pipe. The products uh, made from molten and changed uh, iron, and that form is changed into a mold. Um, most large water lines are made from ductile iron, so just know that ductile iron is made from a combination of molten gray iron and magnesium. I think it gives you one of the other uh, kind of ingredients here, molten gray, and then you should know that it's magnesium, but just know ductile iron is made from a combination of molten gray iron and magnesium. Another note here is you should be able to identify that this is a double hub um, type pipe. All right, so this, this piece of pipe here has a hub here and a hub here. This is hub and spigot, meaning this being the spigot, this being the hub, or some folks refer to it as the bell. And the spigot goes in the bell, and the line can continue on. But this will be on the test, double hub pipe. All right, on this note, all right, generally, generally when sizes above 15 inches are required under a building, the specifications will require you to use ductile iron pipe. So if it's 15 inches under a building, use ductile iron. All right, the next one, cast iron pipe is classified by its wall thickness. And if you see this little C, I, or C trademark, uh, it's manufactured according to the standards set by the Cast Iron Soil Pipe Institute, otherwise known as CISPI right there. When storing and handling cast iron pipe, ensure that dirt, insects, rodents, and animals are prevented from entering the pipe. If it says anything outside of that, then it's, it's not something you need to be concerned with. Extremely high temperatures, extremely cold temperatures, weather, the elements of weather. If it's not right here, it's not something you should be concerned with when storing or handling. You see what I'm saying? All right, we talked about this somewhere else, but a eighth bend turns the pipe one eighth times 360 degrees, which one eighth times 360 degrees is 45. That is said to be 45 degrees. So a one eighth bend is 45 degrees. You got it? Next note, branches, Y's, like you see one Y right here, uh, connects branches. This Y could be a single Y, or if this dotted line was filled in, this would be considered a double Y. But, most important thing to note, Y connects branches. Alright, the dimensions on a T indicate the diameter of openings um, right here. When the branch openings are smaller uh, than the straight through openings, the fitting is labeled with two numbers, such as 4 by 3. This, the first number, is the diameter of, its, of the openings and the straight through run. The second number is the diameter of the branch openings. Alright, so it's, it's a, let's say it's a T, or it's a Y. You've got four, four, that's straight through, so that's the run, and then the branch is three, okay? Right here, this right here is the hub, and 
the Y right here indicates the insertion length. That will be a test question, so just kind of remember that. All right, measuring and cutting no hub pipe. You should subtract the allowance for the ridge on the inside of the neoprene gasket. The next thing, uh, compression joints, they can absorb vibration and be deflected or bent up to five degrees. You should know this, joining no hub pipe requires two special tools the soil pipe cutter, and the torque wrench. And when using that torque wrench, right here is the torque wrench, when using that, you know that if it's set to a designed uh, pounds of force to torque out, essentially, once it reaches that torque, it will make a clicking sound and it will just give way so you know you've reached uh, that appropriate torque on that fitting. Just remember the clicking sound on the torque wrench and I think you'll do all right. All right, I got a few notes. They're real kind of close together here, but um, if the slope is more than a quarter inch per foot, liquid and solid waste may separate. The idea is the water cannot outrun the solid, so it can't be over a quarter inch per foot, all right? Uh, the next note is to attach horizontal hangers to wooden structures, use screws, lash screws, or large nails. I think in the test, it mentioned something about uh, using bolts. That's okay. Uh, just know if it's not here, it's not something you can use. The next note, to fasten the pipe to I-beams, bar joist, or other metal structures, remember this, use beam clamps, I think. I don't even think C-clamps is on there, but just note that you should use beam clamps to connect to anything metal. All right, we were talking about supporting pipe horizontally. Let's talk about it vertically. You guys know this, if you were in my class and we worked on that platform, we have our cast iron coming up. What do we support it with right there? Riser clamps. Riser clamp right here. Support vertical pipe at each floor level. That's pretty much all you need to know, but you know, because you've done this, that we use riser clamps. A couple of last notes here. Performed at the rough end stage, air and water testing uh, can be done, all right? So air and water is what you can test with during the rough end stage, you got it? Final note, there's a test you can do at the end, peppermint test, or mint test. Um, you drop a couple of ounces of uh, peppermint oil uh, vent, then you add some uh, water, hot water, and uh, peppermint's very strong, so if you perform a mint or peppermint test and you smell uh, mint or peppermint in your system, you have a leak. All right, just remember that. All right, guys, that will do it for Module 8 cast iron pipe and cast iron fittings. I hope you got your notes. I hope you're doing wonderful. I, I can't wait to see you uh, in class when we can actually do some things. Uh, soon and very soon, we will just do that. Uh, but just keep staying safe and uh, keep studying. And uh, let's do the best we can. All right, guys, later.